crashes make the rich richer. So if you want to get rich quick, I, I like the crashes. I invest as an insider. And for the average person who knows very little, I say, well, insider trading is illegal. No, it's not. So when people say, how do I change my life? Well, you change those words. I wouldn't go to school because you learn nothing about money in school. Ask, I wouldn't get a job because if I have a job, I'm an employee. And then I'd pay taxes. And I don't pay taxes. And I don't save money. And I use debt to get rich. And I don't invest in the stock market. That's why I'm rich. And so the young people who are listening right now are saying, but that's what my mom and dad said. But that's what mom and dad say all over the world. So to the young people, I just say challenge or question what you've been taught. Because from the Bible, I'm not religious, yeah, yeah. the word becomes flesh. So if you say, go to school, they say, but I'll learn nothing about money. Get a job, you become an employee. Yeah. If you're an employee, you work for money, I pay taxes. Then they tell you to save money. Why would you save money when the government's printing money? You know? and get out of debt. Well, debt is money. I use debt to get rich. Most people use debt to get poor and invest in the stock market. I don't invest in the stock market. So when you, when you wonder why so many people struggle financially is they haven't challenged the hypnosis, the words, go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get paid taxes. Until you question those hypnotic trances, you don't change. So when I was a little boy, I had poor dad and rich dad, you know, saying. In your head. He's saying, go to school. My rich dad goes, what a waste of time that is, you know. Right. And the way my rich dad taught me, just playing Monopoly. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. I learned about money. I learned to be a capitalist, not an employee. I don't pay taxes. I use debt for money. And I don't, I don't invest in the stock market. And when I say that to adults, they get angry at me. So, well, that's what I've done. I said, well, that's why you're poor. But when I said to young people, you have a chance yet. You have a chance. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying question the hypnotic trance put in your head because that's what keeps people poor. The economy doesn't exist out here. The economy exists in here. Yeah. And until you change the words, the words become flesh. If you get a job, you're an employee. If you save money, you're a saver. And why would you save money when they're printing money? And they say, invest in the stock market for your pension. Well, why would you do that? Because that's how they get your money. And you know, get out of debt when guys like me are using debt as money. So question it, that's all I'm saying. So what do you think that person should do? They've started to question their beliefs. They got it. They know, okay, I've been brainwashed. I know, but what do I do now? Yeah. Next. Well, not to be commercial about it, but yeah. you know, that's why I created the cash flow game. Yeah. It's the only game that teaches accounting. Yeah. And most people come out of school, they don't even know what accounting is. They say, oh, they, they taught me to balance a checkbook. I'm going, big deal, you know? You have to know assets and liabilities. You must understand taxes. The rich don't pay taxes. Yeah. And the rich use debt as money. So the question is, that's, that's what I had to do when I was in my 20s. I said, how is it the rich learn to use debt as money? That's a challenge. And the brain goes, Because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, you got it. And then, then how do they not pay taxes? And what you'll find out in my new book, Fake, is the combination of debt and taxes. You see, the more debt I use, the less tax I pay. Right. It's counterintuitive. And that works because you're creating jobs, or what, why, why is that working? Where well, there's many, there's many reasons, okay. and that's why I have, I have the best tax advisors. The, the biggest thing for most young people is that our schools teach us to be ICs, into independent contractors, okay. or self-employed, or even if you're an employee, you're still an independent contractor who has a job. And you do it by yourself. You know, I, I think. You know, I think. I think much of much of the young world is in the selfie world. You know, look at me, look at me, yeah. look at me. Whereas 
in my world, it's a team sport. I'm a rugby player. I go on the field with a team, toughest, meanest guys I know. And so you could be the, you could be the A student from Princeton, but I go on the field with 15 tough men, kick your ass. And so the average guy is coming out there, you know, like, oh, I got an A, I went to Princeton, I went to Harvard, and the corporate America comes out and they go, boom. So that's why when I talk to young people, I say, look, it's a team sport. So the first person I have is a bookkeeper. Bookkeeper is the lowest paid person on my team, but the most important. Right. The bookkeeper then keeps the accurate records that my accountant can use, and my attorney can use, and my banker can use. That's the combination there. And my banker, my attorney, and my accountant must work together as a team. Most people, their bankers, accountants, and attorneys don't work for those teams because in school, we're taught to take our tests on our own. If you ask for help, you're cheating. In my world, it's called cooperation. And what I found with most smart people, they don't know how to cooperate. Mm. They don't know how to ask for help because in their brains, that's cheating. It means you're stupid. It means you're weak. It means you're stupid. I, you know, I didn't have that problem because I was stupid in school, so I was asked for help. But the teacher says, that's cheating. <laughs> and I want the smartest attorneys, accountants, bookkeepers, bankers, politicians. I come at it as a team. Just think about this. You know, it's like a basketball team. They're playing basketball. But you went to Harvard. You have a master's, a PhD. But you're playing against five guys. You know, I don't care how smart you are. Those five guys will kick your butt all day long. This is not in the movies. Bruce Lee cannot really beat 10 people in real life, that's right? That's right. But that's in, what in the movies, that's, that's what's perceived. Like, if you're good enough, you can beat 10 people. Yeah, that's In not real true. life, you're going to lose every not time. In, not in the real, not in the corporate world. So I operate according to the rules of corporate America. Yeah. I don't operate according to the rules of employee America. They're different. The tax rules for corporate guys is less than employees. Employees pay the highest taxes. Yeah. Guys like Trump and me pay zero. The biggest thing about fake is, you know, the, the dollar became fake, the US dollar became fake money in 71. But it's the fake teachers. Why would you listen to a poor person? Why would you listen to a poor person about money? And that was my poor dad, very good man, PhD. But he always says, go to school, get a job, work hard, pay taxes, get out of debt, and invest in the stock market. He's trying to hypnotize me. And my rich dad, thank God I had a rich dad, he goes, you gotta be an idiot to follow that advice. And so you're a very bright young man to pick up rich dad, poor dad, it's only a book on accounting. My cash flow game is only a book on accounting. That was uh, a a game of, it's yeah. all, uh, but if, if you don't know accounting, you don't have accountability. Yeah. You know, you have accountability in your life. And then you can question when somebody tells you to invest in the stock market, I go, but when do I get my money back? So in fake, I talk about the infinite return. I never use my money. I don't need to save money. I use debt 100% of the time, and I don't pay taxes. So I took real estate courses, not because I like real estate, because real estate is about debt and taxes. Right. So the more debt I use, which is real money, debt is real money, the less tax I pay. And especially with the interest rates right now, that have been lowest in the last 5,000 years or something like Mo that? Money is cheap right now, zero. Yeah. Get yeah. it free. Yeah. Why would you save it? Why would you save it when they print it? And I talk about trade, you know, investing. I invest as an insider. And for the average person who knows very little, I say, well, insider trading is illegal. No, it's not. But they've been programmed to think it's illegal. There are certain forms of investing where insider trading is illegal, but for the most part, it isn't illegal. Hmm. But what fires off because they've been hypnotized, oh, insider trading, he's a crook, oh, and he doesn't pay taxes. Do you think I'd be writing about it if I was a criminal? So I, I wrote fake so people could challenge the hypnosis in their brains, you know, go to school, work hard, pay taxes, get out of debt. I used debt as money, because in 1971, money became debt. 
people people look at it now and because they're scared and they're safety oriented thinking oh i couldn't really start now because there's a financial crisis coming yeah so why would i start now so it's, it's still the safety that they're looking for so what would you think about what would you say about that about the financial crisis coming up if well there should be some sort of corrections happening in the future well let me ask you this if you're yeah. you, you had bought a ticket to get on the titanic right yeah and you knew it was going to sink what would you do I'll build the best boat to get out of it. I would be getting ready to get off of it as quickly as possible. Okay. You know, I, I would be looking at life rafts and checking things out and you know things and, like that. Yeah. Because we're going down. Yeah. And this is the difference. Crashes make the rich richer. So what happens is, as an old saying in investing, the bear goes up, the, I mean, the bull goes up the stairs. There's bulls and bears, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bull goes up the stairs the bear goes out the window. So if you want to get rich quick, I, I like the crashes. Because you can buy low. Oh, shit. it comes down so fast. So if you, you can do it in stocks, you can short the thing, you can do, you know, naked put, yeah. You can be instantly quick. But it's slow going up, but it's fast when it crashes. So right now, if I was a young person, I'd be taking probably a stock options course mm -hmm. to trade the market coming down because you'll get rich faster that way. It takes about five years to practice that. But I love crashes. You know, I get really excited about a crash. Unfortunately, most people get wiped out. But nonetheless, the facts are crashes make the rich richer. That's why fake is fight fake with facts. Yeah. So if you want to get rich quick, you know, it's when the Titanic is going down. You can sell lifeboats. You have to make mistakes to learn, but our schools punish you for making mistakes. And then they also punish you for asking for help because that's called cheating. I call it cooperation. Yeah. So the, everything is opposite from school. You know, entrepreneurs are not going to make good employees. So you might as well think of your conditioning and do the opposite, and you're probably better off. Well, you got to change, go to school, get a job, save money, pay taxes. Yeah. You know, the question right now is, how do I make so much money, I use debt, and I pay no taxes legally? I said, I wouldn't be saying that if I was crooked about it. But I don't have to hide because I do it legally. When people hear this advice, then they go out in the world, and me included, but let's say I've done some sports, you've obviously had military training and, and all the things that had that, I think, evolved discipline in you, I, I'm thinking. Um, but what would, what would you be your advice to toughen up? Because otherwise, any challenge that faces you, you're just going to fade and go back to safety. Correct, correct, correct. Well, I think that's one of the biggest problems is that yeah. people, the word is called resilience. Okay. If you, you know, like the greatest athlete in, in my time is Tiger Woods. Well, he just won a championship again. Yeah, but so. he went way up and he came down as, you know, his wife caught him cheating, you know, everything, the humiliation. And, and then his back goes out, he has surgery. And after this long down period, he comes roaring back up to the top. And if you've ever been to Augusta, the golf course where the Masters was played, that is the toughest golf course I have ever seen. I don't know how those guys play that course. Yeah. You have to be a mountain goat to play that course, you know. And these guys are taking shots from down here, the green's up here. And these guys are going, holy mackerel. So he came back. So if there's a story of resilience and determination and a comeback, it's Tiger Woods. I mean, he, my esteem of, I just, I'm in awe of that guy. He is really a great man to come from the top to the bottom, back to the top, you know. And we all have that in us, mm. except in school, we told don't make mistakes. You know, if you fail, you're stupid. Well, he came back, he made him stronger. <laughs>